Today's hearing is entitled, Why Taiwan Matters. The answer simply is that Taiwan matters because people matter. I do not people in that false use as in the People's Republic of China. I refer to people as in we the people. Taiwan has taken the we the people principles of democracy, human rights, freedom of religion, and a free market economy and transplanted them firmly into East Asian soil. Taiwan has belied those critics who assert that a Confucian-based hierarchical society is still suited for the tenets of Jeffersonian democracy. Taiwan offers the audacity of hope. You like that, that phrase? <laughs> <laughs> to those survivors of the Tiananmen Square massacre. Taiwan inspires all victims of Beijing's totalitarian oppression that they need not be faith apart. It is for this very reason, this shining example of liberty, that the cynical old men who still rule in Beijing are so fearful of Taiwan. It is for this very reason that they strive to eliminate this beacon of democracy. And it is for this very reason that Congress through the Taiwan Relations Act, must strive to help preserve a Taiwan that reflects the aspirations of its people. This hearing is especially timely and necessary because it has come to my attention that there is a new spirit of appeasement in the air. Some in Washington policy circles are suggesting that the time has come to recognize the reality of a rising China and to cut our ties to Taiwan. This would be a terrible mistake, which would have far-reaching ramifications of how the U.S. treats its democratic allies, its friends. Turning to Taiwan's round of free elections uh, early next year, it should be perfectly clear the people of Taiwan must be able to choose their leaders and influence their future free from outside bullying or coercion. I have heard that some communist cronies in Beijing even recently urged the people of Taiwan to, quote, choose the right person, end quote, in the upcoming elections, or else. This naysayer would seem to be subscribing to Chairman, Mao, Chairman Mao's old dictum that, quote, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun, end quote. To the communist leaders in Beijing, I say this, the ballot box is mightier than the gun's barrel. And I have used for the naysayers on Taiwan policy as well. The United States is a Pacific power and plans to remain so for this century and beyond. The commitments made in the Taiwan Relations Act have remained unchanged for over 30 years and still hold true today. The pledges in the six assurances given by President Ronald Reagan to Taiwan, including the one not to set a date for termination of arms sales to Taiwan, remains as firm today as they were back in 1982. With over 1,600 missiles pointed directly across the Taiwan Strait, Taiwan needs Pardon. the means to defend itself from the threats and intimidations. Taiwan needs the next generation of F-16 fighters now in order to protect its skies. With CIA Director and incoming Defense Secretary Leon Panetta recently telling our Senate colleagues that China is preparing for, quote, potential contingencies, end quote, that may involve Taiwan. So there is a clear and present danger of sending Beijing the wrong signal. To avoid any misinterpretation about congressional commitment to Taiwan security and survival, I will soon introduce legislation to enhance the Taiwan Relations Act. And I would like to add a final word of caution to our friends, for our friends regarding Taiwan. The American Chamber of Commerce in Taipei, in its annual white paper, cautioned Taiwan against an over-reliance on trade with China and urged a diversi diversification of Taiwan's overseas markets. I took the caution last year and repeat here today that Beijing's pursuit of ever-deepening trade ties with Taiwan 
could prove to be a Trojan horse. Beijing's game plan seems to be that economic integration will lead inevitably to political integration. The people of Taiwan must be vigilant in remembering that all that glitters is not gold. The challenges in the 32 years since the enactment of the Taiwan Relations Act have been many, and they remain so today. But we in Washington, as in Taiwan, give due diligence to the challenges at hand. We can look forward to the continuation of the vibrant democracy, the free market economy enjoyed by the people of Taiwan. And before recognizing the ranking member for his opening remarks, I would like to know the presence in our audience today of our former colleague, Congressman Lester Wolf of New York. Lester, will you stand? He was chairman of this committee's Asia and Pacific Subcommittee during this uh, crucial period of the late 1970s. Congressman Wolf played a leadership role in the framing and legislative enactment of the Taiwan Relations Act.